Hello everyone and welcome to North American Elite Wrestling. This is your host Danny Jackpot with another great episode here in AEW Second in Command, a big show. Tonight we'll find out the other two men who move on to the NAEW World Heavyweight Championship match, the NAEW Championship match at NAEW 3. Also we'll find out the man who moved on to face Al Cabrera in the NAEW 3 Maple League Championship match. As Biff Andreas makes his way down to six man for a six-man tag team match here tonight to start off this second in command show. In AEW second in command has five matches tonight. You'll see in the main event, Joe Omega and Mason Chronic take, up, take on each other. Winner moves on the world championship. Also speaking of that, Extreme Tony, the playmaker, is here. Joe Omega, Extreme Tony, and Mason Chronic all signing with NAEW in the last week, uh, along with Norm the Storm Daily who came out with TJ Nicholson at the end of NAEW 1. Does this mean the Crusade is back? Well, I'm not too sure about that. If, if Norm was just making his debut and he was out there with TJ, but either way, they, they had a little, they were talking to Lester Barkley and had a little something to say back and forth to each other as the show ended. Biff Andreas teams with Connor James and Lester Barkley tonight to take on TJ, Al, and Aussie Andy. As Connor James makes his way down to the ring now. Connor James is not happy as as he thinks Al Cabrera stole his pinfall in that fatal four-way match. As he should be in the Maple Leaf Championship match next week instead of being left out of the dark. That could very well be true. Connor James, as of right now, does not have a match at NAEW3. Connor James coming in the ring right now, telling the fans what's up. And that's not a good what's up. I'm saying he's telling the fans off, everybody. Connor James commentated the underground one with me. Nice to have Connor James back in the commentary booth, I'll tell you that, guys. Connor James looking to get some revenge here on Al Cabrera as we await the, as we await the entrance of Lester. Barkley, one of the two men in this match who, well, the only two men in NAEW right now with a guaranteed champ World Championship match, the NAEW Championship match, I call it the World Championship, but it's just the NAEW Championship match, guys. Lester Barkley looking a lot more terrifying than he did last week, I'll tell you that right now. Lester Barkley's a scary fella, and I can tell you that from experience that he has beaten me in a little league called CXWI. Who me and him will both be and competing in their giant rumble match here soon. As these three men will take on the three men that are about to come out. Fans booing these guys right now. I'll tell you that. I can hear it happening. I don't know if you can or not. Lester Barkley is the biggest dude in this match, I'll tell you that. He's a scary dude. Lester Barkley currently with TJ Nicholson in the World Championship Fatal 4 Way Elimination match at NAEW3. Some people are going to say that, that is. That, 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 that he is the favorite right now. But the three guys that who that, that have signed could be in, and that have a possibility to be in that world title match. Two, one of them will be one of them. One of the two will be Joe Omega and Mason Connor taking on each other in the main event. One of those two will guaranteed to be in that match. To me, it's scary. See, it's, it's going to be scary for uh, all four of those competitors because they're going to have some heck of a competition. As Al Cabrera makes his way down to the ring, Al Cabrera guaranteed to be in the 20-minute Iron Man Championship, uh, Iron Man Maple Leaf Championship match. 
20 minute Iron Man match for the Maple Leaf Championship on the very next NAEW 3. Don't want to don't want to confuse everybody, but at the time I will let you guys know right now that I know for a fact that two underground specials will probably be released before NAEW 3. One we I know there's a Halloween underground, a haunted underground. Ooh, spooky. It's not going to come up and I know that the suspect who has recently signed with NAEW will be at the Haunted Underground. <laughs> yeah. Al Cabrera in the ring now. Is he going to waste his tag team partners coming out? And here comes Andy Austin. One of the four men who competed last week in, the, in that first qualifying Fatal 4 for the Maple Leaf Championship. Aussie Andy looking to do big things here in NAEW, he told me there, as he called me a bloke. I like Aussie Andy, though. I will say he's in the ring with some of my good friends in college. There's Biff that he's going to be facing. Al, who is a good friend of mine, he's going to be teaming up with. Connor James, who, well, as you guys told him, got a commentary booth. Are real, he's a good friend of mine, too. A good friend of mine. And no, I was a real good friend of like Biff, though. Biff, Biff's the one. Let's not, let's, not, let's not talk about all that, though. TJ coming out now, who's also a friend of mine. <laughs> that segue was kind of built up, guys. I won't lie. Maybe I built that one up a little bit <laughs> for TJ's entrance. Uh, TJ, the uh, guy who will move on next week to NAW3 along with Lester Barkley, like I was talking about, in the NAEW Championship match. But another thing that I was talking about is him and Norm the Storm Daily trying to reform the future. Or are they the crusade? Or was he just introducing Norm? And what were him and Lester going back and forth about? A lot of unanswered questions here about that. Hoping to get some answers in the next upcoming weeks. What's going on? Joe Omega signing to the company is also a little questioning. Is he is he going to be with those guys? Or we haven't really heard anything about that or seen them or anything together. So we we, we don't know this, we don't know the story about that. You know Joe Omega is, is focusing on the World Heavyweight Championship here match here tonight. As the six-man tag team match is underway, Biff and Al going at it in the, to start this match off. Two legal men for their team. Al getting the upper hand with a big back elbow in the back of Biff's head. Al Cabrera, Biff Andreas. Good way to start off. And AW2, second in command. Al Cabrera now with the big Hurricane Rana. Al Cabrera. You would say is the rookie compared to Biff, but I wouldn't say rookie. He's an experienced, established stuck call himself. But Biff Andreas, the veteran of the two. Biff Andreas, right there, using like that veteran experience that like I was just talking about. And a big sleeper slam by Biff as he tags in Connor James. It's Connor. As Biff holds Al back for Connor. Connor James looking to get some revenge from last week. Like I said, he believes Al took his pinfall. He's the reason why Al he's Al's the reason why he's not in the Maple Leaf Championship match. Big back suplex on Al. And and Connor's team just fired up there in the corner. And Connor James now with the big insecurity to the back of Al's head. And Al Cabrera at the top rope and he's in the wrong corner though. Or he's in the right corner though, but Connor James did, but at the wrong timing, because as, as I meant to say, sorry, right corner, wrong timing. Connor James now has has the upper hand. But, but I was saying that, but Al Cabrera gets the reversal right there. Big reversal on, on Connor James. And a reversal back by Connor James. Connor James actually kind of more has had the upper hand more than anybody in this match right now between him and Al. I'll tell you that, honestly. Al though kips up. Al though looking to build some offense here. The momentum's gaining on Al's side. But as soon as I say that, Connor James seems to get the upper hand in a big German suplex. That's going to stop momentum. And, and just now grounding now for a second there. It's a big back elbow stopping his momentum. 
Well, able to reverse it, Russian leg sweep. If Alice Smart right now, he's gonna tag out like I said, and he does. Ossiandy now in the ring. Drop kicking Connor on the outside. These two have hatred for each other. These two have feuded around the world. I've seen Connor James wear a black pub club t shirt. I've seen Connor James wear the Australian flag around his face. He did disrespect Ossie Andy and his crew of people. His, his, love, his whole countrymen of Australia. He's disrespected everything that Andy has stood for. Trust me, is Lester Barkley in the match now? This should be a challenge for Aussie Andy because Dustin Berkeley is the biggest guy in this match. Has a, has a world title match next week. Defeated Zack Starr almost with ease, some people said. Last week in the main event in EW1, man main events one show starts the other. He always says, you either want to be the main event or the opening act because no one else will forget you. Because no one else will remember if you're not. I can't remember if he actually said that. No, he never said that, guys. I said that. I just said that. As Aussie Andy putting up a good fight against Lester Barkley, I'll tell you that. Dead even right now, these two seem to be. I, I can't believe it. There's a strength to Andy. Well, Andy said he wants to do big things here in AEW. And what if he pinned Lester Barkley tonight? That would be huge. And now drop kicking Barkley out to the outside of the ring. But that was from the apron, not like he did Connor James earlier. <laughs> And Lester Barkley seems to now get a little bit of control of Andy. No, he doesn't. Andy slips through. Barkley. Barkley's a big boy. So Andy using a little bit of quickness to slip through there. Oh, but a big DDT by Barkley. That's maybe, that maybe might stop, uh, stop Andy a little bit being dropped right on his head. But it doesn't. Andy comes through with a big shoulder block. Like I said, Andy's no small dude. Oh, I see Andy now. Got control of Lester Barkley. Who would have thought I'd be saying that? Barkley, though, throwing him down in the mat using that big strength advantage he has over Andy, I'd imagine. But we haven't seen, we haven't seen too much of the strength advantage. But Barkley picking him up. Pump handle slam by Barkley. That's, that's, that's got, that could be it. James attacking Al. Of course he attacks Al. He doesn't like Al at all. And Barkley looking to finish this match. But I think Ossiani with a, a huge reversal right there because it looked like Barkley was going for that huge slam. He, he finished Jack Star off with that huge just front for that front slam that he just uh, dominates with. It's been his finisher. And Ossiani going for the, uh, the, the Aussie bomb and nails it. One. And oh, Barkley, big guy, kicks out of the Aussie bomb like it's nothing. But, but Andy throwing him down because. Because Andy's getting the advantage here. That, that, that one Aussie bomb does do damage to you. Trust me. Just because he kicked out of one doesn't mean that the damage is not done. Big form to face by Andy. TJ Nicholson nowhere to be seen when maybe Andy needs to get a tag. I guess all oh, he's trying to he's, he's distracting Connor James and 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 his tag team partner Biff, but it, and it worked. Very surprised there. I don't know what TJ was doing though. I think we need to see a tag. And, and then Lester knocked Al off the ring neighbor, knowing that once again he needed to yeah, Andy needs a tag here. As Andy's been dominating though, but Andy's out of getting tired. And Lester Barkley, even though he hasn't nailed much moves on Andy, they've been big moves. But Andy's had firm control of this match, I must say. An impressive showing so far by Aussie Andy. Uh, and and a, a more impressive out standing than I would imagine is he's now taking it to Connor James. He's actually pinning Connor James. And only getting a one count. Connor James still got to be really fresh. You got to imagine that, though. And Connor James now looking to do something to Andy while he, well, Andy was a little stunned, but, but it, it didn't work. But maybe a, a baby dropping his dropping the back of his head in the, in the apron will work. Cause I, I've seen the front of his head drop by Lester and then still hasn't stopped Andy. This guy's been a freight train out there. A freight train. Whatever you call it. Flapjack on Connor James. And that ain't a pancake. But he but he only he's pancake Connor James down too. Oh, wait a second. Is he looking for the Aussie bomb? Connor James find it. Nailed a, nailed a devastating variation of the Aussie bomb, I would say. 
And I, I think Connor James would have been pinned if it wasn't for his partners. And he's throwing him down. TJ Nicholson, nowhere being seen again for this tag. Where is TJ Nicholson? God damn, a hip toss on Connor James. One, two, and L. TJ was to come, comes in the. He nailed Connor James with a little running shoulder tackle. Connor TJ's first, I think, offensive move, maybe, all match. TJ staying in the ring, doing absolutely nothing right now. I have to point this out that TJ. As uh, the only man has not been legal for his team. And Al Capra Bigelow is finisher. He's not. That's not really the name of it, but he's gonna hate me for calling it for that. But he is nail card with his finisher. That big double. That's we can double DDT. Three and it's over. Al Capra, Andy Aussie, and TJ Nicholson pick up a huge win in the six-man tag team match. But a little backstory here: TJ Nicholson doesn't tag into the match at all. Not the only guy not to be a legal man for his team and uh, dang I'll see Andy put up one hell of an effort that I wouldn't even believe it hey uh, TA took it to all he took it to everyone but Biff tonight I'll tell you that Karn James you know this god damn a hip toss right there you know the hip toss and then Al nailed his finisher three count not once did you see TJ in any of those replays but Al Cabrera Aussie Andy, TJ Nicholson pick up these huge wins here tonight. TJ will move on in the week three with Lester Barkley for the NAEW champion or, or NAEW three for the NAEW championship fail four elimination match. Let's not forget, and Aussie Andy will be at NAEW week three to fit. We're waiting for his opponent tonight. We're waiting to find out who his opponent tonight is in that for the 20 minute Iron Man match for the Maple Leaf cha championship. And Speaking of championships, we move on forward to a NAEW Frenzy Fiesta Fatal 4-Way Table Match. The Fatal 4-Way means that only the first man to get pinned in this match will be. Or the first man to send someone to a table in the match, the match will end. And they, right then and there, will be the Frenzy Fiesta Champion. We also got some rules about the Frenzy Fiesta Championship. We've learned that if you get three defenses, and that's not winning the belt. That's three defenses as champion. So if Marcus wins tonight, that'd be defense one. If you get three defenses champion, you can cash in as and, and, and take that and and, and right then right then in there, it's gotta be three defenses. Well anytime you got three defenses and cash that in for a Maple Leaf Championship match. If you get five defenses, and that's the that means if you move on to stage four and get that fourth defense, you're losing or lose that lose that stage four and that fourth defense, going for the fourth defense. You do you no longer get the Maple Leaf title match. That means you cannot go back and want that match. It's, you're moving on right for the world title match at, at stage five. So, Frenzy Fiesta Championship, a little bit more meaning here now in North American Elite Wrestling. Marcus Matrix winning the match in a, in a 10 man rumble. And Marcus Matrix needed some help from Andrew Leanna to, to eliminate this guy, Hugo Sullivan. Hugo Sullivan earned the spot because he eliminated five guys in that Rumble match. You thought that he would have took on that, he would have took home that Frenzy Fiesta Championship, but he didn't. He could, he could very well tonight. A man his size should be easily be able to throw someone over the top rope and through a table. Now. The, some people say <coughs> that when Sebastian Murphy's music hit, that he he might be that might actually save Hugo for a little bit. We don't know if the Goodfellas are together or not. Or if they read if they read for him. As Sebastian Murphy was quickly tossed over the top rope, but as soon as that happened, so did Hugo. So I don't know if it was an omen for Hugo or what happened there. Or maybe it was just coincidental timing. Sean Dynasty now making his way to the ring. The astronaut Sean Dynasty. This man is a hardcore legend. Don't let the astronaut costume fool you. 
This man is set to take on Biff Andreas also at the Halloween un at, the, at the Haunted Underground Special. I'll tell you that right now, guys. That, that, that is a set match at the Haunted Underground Special. Will it be for the Frenzy Fiesta Championship? It might be. But it can't be because it needs to be at least a... Oh, because the Frenzy Fiesta Championship match, a little bit more rules to that, guys. As Mike Valander makes his way down the ring. And the Frenzy Fiesta, if you get three defenses, make believe five defenses... World or AEW Championship, the match at least has to be four men in the match. Has to be a special rule, as in like tonight is a table match. So tonight, so that's so those are extra rules to the Frenzy Fiesta Championship. If you're keeping score at home, so four points of this of this championship, three defenses, Maple Leaf five, and AEW Championship, four at least four men in the match, and there's always got to be some kind of rule, special rule to the match. As Mike Valander teaming up with Butch, as you've seen in uh, uh, Underground One, teaming up with Butch, moving on in the tag team title tournament, believed to have to believe maybe been stretched 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 to 16 teams. I've heard instead of an eight-man tournament, it's going to be a 16-team tournament. I don't know how we're going to find figure that out, but that's what the management has. That's what the board of NAEW has told me. And Mike Valander taking it to Hugo in this fatal four. And Mike Valander, the biggest guy in this match, may take it to Hugo as a champion. Marcus Matrix and Sean Dynasty find a corner. Table already in the ring, but but it's but edging the outside of the ring. Marcus Matrix knocks it out of the ring, and Marcus Matrix in a table match goes for a chair. And he, oh, did John Dynasty? Do, oh, like they said, he's a hardcore legend, and anything goes in these in a table match. So why not? Marcus Matrix says. Marcus Matrix looking for some kind of weapon against the hardcore legend. <laughs> I find it funny. John Dynas is willing to take the fight out to the outside of the ring, though. As well, we got two wrestling matches in a wrestling match. As Hugo and Mike Ballander are wrestling each other, and Sean Dynasty and Marcus Matrix have been wrestling each other. Mike Ballander has now appeared in every NAEW show. Interesting. Fatal 4 a for the Frenzy Fiesta Championship. Marcus Matrix, the champion. Challenger, Sean Dynasty. Hugo, Mike Ballander. Table match. We know the winner of this match will next title defense will involve the suspect at Halloween Underground as Hugo tries to send Mike Ballander to the table. That ball that, that, that table is able to st <laughs> pretty sturdy table it looks like Mike Ballander maybe just using his force to come off the table. I don't know what happened there, but that table doesn't break. Hugo isn't champion. I'll tell you that right now as this match continues. Hugo looking to maybe smash Mike Ballander again to this table, but Ballander now getting the upper hand now has Hugo against the table. And looking to maybe powerbomb Hugo to the table, but he can't control Hugo well enough to powerbomb him to the table. He gets a gets the powerbomb off of Hugo and stomp it on his ribs, but that but he, I don't think he's gonna be big up just he only gets the powers to control Hugo like that for a power bomb to the table like he wanted. He has like that running force and Hugo trying to swing Ballander through the table but just a little little off his distance and now Hugo maybe <laughs> Hugo maybe the 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 the, the, the bronze Bronze over over brain right there, maybe where he decides to pick a tail up and move it where it just was. Where <laughs> so, so he just joined picking pick Ballander up again to join the table. Hugo a little mad, mad that the table was not where it should have where he thought it was. And no, and he once again tries to throw Ballander to the table, once again missing the direction of the table. Hugo just just just, just now picking him up for the airplane spin. Sean Dynasty, Marcus Matrix fighting the corner. 
Oh, and then he throws it down, by the way, Hugo. It wasn't just an airplane spin. Dynasty nailing a huge neck breaker on Marcus Matrix. Hugo, not as dominating as he was last week as, as Mike Valentin nails a huge slam right there. A huge angled slam on, on Hugo. And then nailing a huge Death Valley driver that Valentin did on Hugo. Matrix nailing a huge drop kick on Dynasty. Matrix now looking to maybe set up Sean Dynasty for some kind of table like maneuver here. Grabs another table instead. That's Sean Dynasty leaning against one. What is Marcus Matrix trying to set up? But one, Sean Dynasty now cutting him off, cutting him short there. Sean Dynasty leaning the table up against the corner. Marcus Matrix now. Jamarcus Matrix trying to set up something now. He's looking to be in trouble. He's on top of the table. This isn't looking good for Sean, for Marcus Matrix. This is looking really good for Sean. Matrix still getting it, was able to get off the table once he realized what position he was in. <laughs> oh, I think Marcus Matrix, Matrix really got quickly off the table once he realized the position that he might have been in. On top of the table isn't good for Matrix. I think once you feel that air under your fingers, you're like, whoa, 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 this isn't where I thought I was. Oh, and that, oh, and the table's leg giving out as Matrix nailing that. As Ma Matrix, Matrix took that table leg out, kicking it when. Uh, the force of Matrix getting nailed into that leg, or what, a Sean, e either way, the force of one of those two just took out that table leg. I didn't see the best there. Matrix now against the table, and Hugo got him. But, Hugh, but Matrix able to reverse whatever Hugo was going for there. And Matrix sends Hugo through a table, and match is over. Matrix wins. Marcus Matrix eliminates My Marcus Matrix takes it to Hugo with a huge spear. And Matrix, well, Hugo gets the table, Matrix wins. Oh, is that table broke? Is that, is that one table broke? But uh, you're, you're gonna have the controversy to Sean Dynasty break his matrix into a table. <laughs> you know, the table leg broke. Well, he, he didn't send him through a table. Trust me, the rules are gonna send him through a table. So there's no there's no if ands or but. Marcus Matrix almost almost lost to Hugo there. Instead, it was get Hugo against the table instead, and Marcus Matrix count it. That's number one. One one of three or one of five for Marcus Matrix. He'll. He'll be seeing suspect and other opponents at the Haunted Underground special. We already know that. Marcus Ma the, so Marcus Matrix. Still the frenzy. Fiesta the champion. And that's gonna be a hard belt to hold on to with those rules, guys. But it's gonna be a fun championship to form and watch happen and see what happens with it over the next upcoming weeks. Or in NAW's history. As here we go, we got one of two main events here tonight. We got Extreme Tony and Norm Daly, guys, and look who seems to be coming out with Norm. I seen that in the pat in the in, in, in the in the free photo specialist. Extreme Tony is in the building. The playmaker is here, though. We'll get we'll get to what I was talking about in a second. But Extreme Tony, the SGW legend, the CAW legend, is here. Extreme Tony, a multi-time world champion in CAW, trust me. Tony, a threat to everyone that's, that's competing for the NAW championship. And the, 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 qualif the qualifier matches tonight, Joe Omega, Mr. Chronic, and also the main event if he gets there. Because Extreme Tony is definitely one to be looking at, trust me. All eyes are on this match right now. Little backstory, a normal Storm Daily and Extreme Tony. Well, Extreme Tony was the East Champion at the on NAEW East. The East Coast Champion, Norman Storm Daily, was able to cash in his contract in the case and defeat Extreme Tony for it. Yeah. Those guys would also go on to, to compete for the East Coast Tag Team titles to lose the match. As TJ Nicholson is here, and I think the crusade is in full force. If it is not just Norm and TJ at least, here they are. Norm the Storm Daily. I can't believe it. He, he's brought back up with TJ Nicholson, and TJ is here, and the fans, they're, they're cheering the crusade it looks like. But these guys are not good guys when they're together, trust me. When the Crusade are together, these guys aren't, are, are, are they, 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 they're rebellious.
Looks well known to Storm Daily. He's gonna need all the help he needs against a guy like Extreme Tony, but don't forget, Norm the Storm has lost and Norm the Storm has beaten Extreme Tony. Even if Tony was even if Tony was weak, Norm the Storm did beat Norm the Storm has defeated Extreme Tony in a one-on-one -on -one match in a world title match before. No matter how you look at it, that is on paper. And Norm the Storm here tonight, eating it from the e the crowd's just eating this up. TJ Nicholson and Norm the Storm coming out together. For this match, Norm the Storm is Extreme Tony. Man, look at that. TJ and Norm. And Extreme Tony taking it to Norm the Storm Daily here. Wait a second, what's he doing? Padre Popper on Norm the Storm Daily. What? They qu quickly over the Padre Popper and Extreme Tony. Tell Norm, almost got gotcha for a second, but Norm the Storm Daily is someone you can't play with, Tony. It's, uh, uh, look, uh, look, Tony tried pinned him for a quick count, but to Norm the Storm Daily, like, get up, actually. After a Padre Popper, surprisingly. Yo, oh, and lucky, like, Norm even kips up. I think he, I think Norm's playing on an act. I, I, I think Norm's shocked right now, and he's in shock. And, yeah, he did kick out at zero, but I think Norm's hurt. I think Norm's hurt. I think Extreme Tony realized what that that he needed to, he needed to strike quick and he nailed a Padre Popper quickly on Norm. That was a great way to start the match. Extreme Tony's smart. Now Extreme Tony looking for uh, this, this this Death Valley driver that he does. Bam! Extreme Tony nailing the Death Valley driver. Is puts the knee down and just drives him into the mat. And TJ. What the referee stops counting because of TJ? That to to that that Death Valley driver had he was down and out. And I had the storm by Norm behind Tony, but Tony the, to to the referee doesn't the referee didn't realize Tony was down and Norm the storm just got just got off Tony and tried to get the ref's attention, but Tony was already up once once the referee turned back around. <laughs> no, I can't believe. Uh -oh. TJ and, and Norm just, I told you these guys don't want well, the Crusades together. You don't want them to be together. Joe Omega, I wonder, what, where, where does he lie then? I don't see him out here, and I know we know he's in the building. And we, like I said, we know he's focusing on that world title match. He wants to be world champion. Joe Omega is, said he wants to win world title belts. And uh, like I said, Joe Omega, Joe Omega's main focus said it was to be world champion. I know that. So I don't know if he's going to be with these two or not. Don't forget, if if he does defeat him, then he has to face TJ. So I, I don't, I don't really know. But but but, but then again, Norman Storm would have to also. So we don't know. And to Extreme Tony now on the Padre Popper on Norm the Storm on the outside of the ring. He's not playing. Extreme Tony realizes the threat, the danger that he is in. Extreme Tony's a car veteran. And you know what's funny? The Crusade used to originally, and they usually originally go after guys who were in call way too long. They feel like, as in this kind of uh, a one-two here. Tony's Tony's trying to do whatever he can to keep to, to fire up and keep up with Norm to Storm, but it's like a two-on-one match right now between the, with the two, and driving Tony's head into the mat with a with a big DDT. And Norm now, one, two, and oh, Tony kicks out at two. Uh, Tony's head's took some punish in this match, I'll say that. He's, he's even dropped on his head a few times, I would say. The eye of the storm, that big DDT. Those, those are all impact heads right to his head. In fact, Tony's not concussed is amazing. I will say that. And Tony now, quick reversal, throw and, and and once again, TJ distracting the referee. And wait a second, I, well, the, re the referee told TJ he's got to go. He told him he's got to go. And it's the referee's tell the, the, the referee the Tony, Tony had another pinfall on 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 Norm there, and the referee just distracted TJ again, telling him to leave. And Tony going for a sleeper hold here. If he if he if he makes TJ and if he makes Norm pass out here, TJ leaves. Oh, but but reversal by Norm there. That that, that would have been a way to end the match if 
Norm's passed out, that would have been one heck of a way to end the match. And Norm turned he to Tony around, but Tony grabbed Norm. Oh, camera crew did a terrible job there. But 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 Tony grabbed Norm. Now the Padre Popper. Tony grabs Norm again. Now the second Padre Popper. That's like the fourth one in the match, and Norm's down and out. Tony fights for his claws and fights in his first in AEW match, but he defeats Storm the Storm Daily. The extreme Tony now. Mason Chronic, TJ Nicholson. Three guys who are now guaranteed to be in the NAEW championship match at NAEW 3. And Tony now can celebrate and soak it in a little bit with his fans. Oh, that was not the that was not the match that Extreme Tony expected here in, in NAEW at first, but that's the match that Tony currently <laughs> Tony got. Tony's still picking up a big win. We'll know we we know where Tony will be in NAEW 3 as Oh, it looks like we're going to move on now to our next match. Yep, Shane Corson. Done with Tony soaking it off, I'll tell you that. Shane Corson, look at, this guy's nothing but, but it's just, it's just turned since, since, I, since I met that, since I first met this guy a long time back. And I'm talking a long time back. This guy first appeared. And the calm mainstream drafts. No joke. That's that's the first time his name appeared was in the calm mainstream drafts. Back in like 2010, 2009, 2010. I think it was. I'm talking about 2012. I, I can't remember guys the years anymore. But it's been a long time known this guy. But the census guy had that huge concussion to his head and was put in a coma almost since that concussion was so severe that he, he, he came out like this. I don't know. He his, his hair turned white when he's in the end. And, and man, this guy just—it's—it's—he's it's, a—he's a haunted man in himself. I'll tell you that he's a—he's a haunted man himself. And he'll be in, and he'll be, and he'll be at NAEW Spooky Underground. And he's gonna take on this guy, Johnny D. I'll tell you that right now. That match is already is already on the card. Zombie Hunter, Johnny D. Actually, that's wrong now. Monster Hunter Johnny Diaz. That's why he requested to take on Johnny uh, Shane Corson. He really, when he when he when he said Shane Corson, that's a monster. Why? That's a monster I gotta hunt. I got to hunt him. I gotta hunt him. And now, now Johnny D wants to hunt him down. Johnny D asked for a singles match with uh, an extreme rule singles match with, with Shane Corson. Anything goes, and he's gonna get. Johnny D wants to hunt Shane Corson down. Johnny D wants to hunt Shane Corson down. Zombie Hunters. Johnny D making his and AEW debut tonight along with Shane Corson. Who we've already seen the Dark Carnival on both shows. Shane Corson, the leader of the Dark Carnival. Oh, but here comes the favorite right now to win this match. And probably the favorite no matter who the fourth man is to win this match with Marcus Carter. Marcus Carter is making his way out of the ring. An impressive talent for us tonight. An impressive signing for NAEW. Anyway, Martin Jones and Sour Patch Kids. Sorry. Sorry, Lamarcus Carter is huge. I'm not trying to take anything away from Lamarcus Carter by being Munch on Sour Patch Kids. Trust me. He is one hell of a sign here in NAEW. And I expect him, I expect big, big things out of Lamarcus Carter. He has a chance right now to move on the Maple Leaf Championship match with Al Cabrera. And if he gets a match with Al, he might win. I mean, he would be the favorite to win. He's a big guy. Marcus Carter is a guy you don't want to play with. And as we find out who the mystery opponent is, it is Mr. Triple Crown, Stephen Raiden. This man, <laughs> Stephen Raiden, he's a former ACWL champion. A former West Coast champion for New NAW, Steven Raiden. Uh, 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 whoa, and he hasn't changed the business the last time we've seen him. And you see Giant G's staring down Steven Raiden. Maybe we're trying to wonder if that's a monster there too. 
I can't believe it. Steven Raiden, the fourth man in this match. Cocky, arrogant Steven Raiden. The young kid that I found back in 2009. Ten years ago now. And this man's changed so much since the first time I seen him. I met him, I'll tell you that. For the better? Yes. Was it a necessity? No. But what? But it was for the better. He came out of that West Coast Championship reign a lot better, man. As as the smallest man in the match, Johnny D and Marcus Carter, the biggest man in the match, lock up, and Shane Corson and 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 Stephen Raiden, who I will tell you guys right now, you all might right. I remember, but these two have a little bit of history with each other. In new and and new AW. Tag team titles, Stephen Raiden and uh, his and, and, and a partner of his, and I'll tell you right. And, and Shane, Cor Shane Corson, a partner of his, had some battles for the, for those belts. But this is a new league, and I'm just I'm just trying to tell you guys some history and, and some backstory of the match. So let's not worry about what happened there, because everyone's got a fresh start. This is everyone's first match here in, in AEW, coincidentally enough. So all four of these men. Having their first match in NAEW. Steven Ray must have been a new signing along with Marcus Carter and Johnny D. Their signings happened over the last week also. Marcus Carter, I believe, would have had a would, would have had a bigger match, maybe maybe have made it into one of those world title matches if uh, he would have been uh, uh, already signed with the league. But I believe that he was a late signing, one one of the later signings of the all these entrants. Johnny D, I believe actually one of the earliest signs of all those entrants, was almost announced right after the first episode. Having to hunt down a monster like Shane Corson. But those guys haven't even got a chance to lock up yet. You know, Shane Corson taking it to Stephen Ray on the outside of the ring. One of these guys will be the man in the 20 minute Iron, match, Iron Man match at NAEW 3 that will take on Al Cabrera. That'll be fun to watch. And Steven Raiden at the announce table now in front of me, just taking it down. Oh, but Steven Raiden. Was able to reverse whatever Shane Corson had planned there. Shane Corson, a guy who likes to use the ropes a lot. Almost calls himself a rope walker. Like a night walker. The night walker or rope walking. That's what he calls himself. Shane Corson, a lighter guy too, don't forget. See if Steve Rain also a lighter guy. Looking for a sunset flip, but a rope I I, I think I think he, I, I think he's almost calling him a rope break on 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 that, and then we went down went down to call Steven Rain's pin and Steven Rain was arguing with a rope break. Oh, there's a rope break in the middle of the ring. I, I think there was, I think the referee may have caused some confusion right there for the ref, for the wrestlers. That was a little funny. And bit and 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 even though they're oh steamroller there by Marcus Carter on John and D. Well, Marcus Carter, like I said, he, I, he he's my favorite to win this match, honestly, between the, between the four guys that are in here. Steven Raiden, though, experience alone would be, would be the favorite a lot of people would say. And Marcus Carter's first big win in CAW would say is defeating me a long time ago. Giant D, I've been lifelong friends with here in CAW. I'll tell you that. For a long time, I've been friends with Giant D. And Giant D with a pin on Shane Corson there. And Monster Killer. The Monster Killer, he calls that. Only in a two, the Steven Ray was able to break it up. He believes that Shane Corson is a monster, Johnny D. And those two will lock up at Halloween Underground.
And, oh, Shane Corson driving Johnny D's head to the mat. Oh. Well, one of these guys be walking in the hallway underground, being, being the number one, the other number one contender for the Maple Leaf Championship. Oh, and Shane Corson drop kicking Steve Rain in the head. Back to the original two lockups of this match again. G Love Marcus Carter, John D going at it, Steve Rain and Shane Corson going at it. <coughs> well, Marcus Carter was it put was put in that <coughs> giant corporate clutch like maneuver, that million dollar dream like maneuver by Johnny D, but he was able to roll out of it because of his size. And Shane Corson completely oblivious to what was going on around him because he's Paying a little homage to a groovy guy that we all used to know, I think, right there. You know that that was that was a pretty cool little thing right there. We got to see him throw a little little throwback right there by Shane Corson. To a groovy guy we all used to know. And Giant D trying to pick up suplex and Mario Turgan trying to look for a quick pin on a suple, but that didn't work out for him. And Giant D now kicking Marcus Carter's head in, but but Stephen Rainey, all the ratings are wrapped on Shane Corson before that, looking for the pinfall there. Lifeline, the new the new finisher name he calls that, still the same move, but he calls it the Lifeline now. That leg lariat that that Shane Corson does. Almost, and all these guys have almost like all nailed finishers now at this point. See, Lamarcus Carter finished a lot of guys off the steamroller. We've all seen a lot of Shane Corson finish our partners with the lifeline. We've all seen Raiden's wear out the work. We've all seen the monster killer all put down guys. The one called the zombie killer. And Johnny D wins the match. Pins, pins, I, 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 unexpectedly, this match comes to a close. I didn't even see the final move by Johnny D. That that that's how quick these fatal four ways can end, guys. That's how quick these fatal four ways can end. Well, 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 can the replay show us what this final move was? That 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 what was it? Giant D nailed on Steven Raiden. It was a low blow. Johnny, please, Johnny D nailed a low blow on Steven Raiden. Whoa. What? What just happened? Andrew Liana? What? I, I bet you he was the what? He and what's he doing? Him and Steven Raiden, they're working together? What? Andrew Liana, what? Andrew Liana's here with Steven Raiden. What was that? Johnny D was on the nail, low blow on Steven Raiden and pin him and Andrew Liana runs over and runs from, uh, what was I told, through the audience? He came up from, came up from almost, came from the audience, I'm being told. Is Sam Ryan extends his hand? These two, are they back together? What? You're kidding me. And, uh, look at these, these two, these two guys, they, 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 they what was all this? They really worked together and put put down. That wasn't a replay, guys. That just ha what? I I I I don't know what just happened there. Maybe some technical difficulties. But but Steven Rain and Andrew Liana walking away there. Steven and Andrew, Steven Rain and Andrew Liana walking away, hand in hand. I, I that's a feel good moment for me, guys, seeing these two together again. But oh, we gotta move on to our main event: Mason Chronic versus Joe Omega. The NAEW two second in command main event. And Mason Chronic making his way down the ring right now. Mason Chronic. Will he be the fourth man in the, in, in the match for Extreme Tony, TJ Nicholson, and Lester Barkley? The Fatal 4-Way Elimination match that I've been talking about for the last two shows. 
will finally figure out who the four men will be in that match for NAEW 3. Mason Chronic coming out now. And the fans seem to be a little bit behind Mason Chronic. Glad to see Mason Chronic here in AEW. And what's happening here? What is TJ Nicholson? It's no oh my god, it's Norma Storm and it's Joe Omega! The Crusade is back together! What am I seeing right here? The Crusade is back together! Is Joe Omega the leader? What's going on? And he's signaling his men down in the ring. What is going on here? I am I'm shocked! What what's going on? The crusade is here! The crusade! The TJ Nicholson! Joe Omega! Dawn the Storm Daily are all together! This is like this is the first time since since in years these three men have all been together. The Joe Omega is the leader. I think Joe Omega must be the leader. I don't know what's going on right now, guys. Did Joe Omega form this? Both these guys pointing to Joe Omega because it's a smash. Maybe I'm, I think Joe's the leader though. What is this? The Crusade is here. And what are they doing? Mason Chronic jumped in the ring and they're all they all can't just beat down Mason Chronic. What? What is this? This 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 is not our main event! This wasn't our main event! Joe Omega and Mason Chronic is our final main event! What's going on? Mason Chronic, these thugs beating down beating down Mason Chronic. This isn't good. This isn't good. The Crusade is here in new in AEW. I'm the Crusade is here in AEW. I am not shocked that I that I think that I'm back in the past. But no, this is currently happening now. The Crusade is still alive. The Crusade isn't in AEW. What's happening? I thought this was gonna be different, guys. What is the Crusade doing here? And Mason Chronic doing his best to fight off these three guys. I don't think Mason Chronic's made many of these friends in the AEW locker room right now. I don't think many guys want to go one on one with the Crusade, let alone maybe I. I I I think maybe maybe, maybe the locker room is just as shocked as I am. What is happening here? And Norma Storm and GJ once again another double team maneuver on Mason Chronic. And Joe just kicking Mason Chronic's head in. And 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 TJ now de de destroying the announce table. The crew says destroying everything around here. That crusade is destroying our main event here tonight. Mason Chronic looking to try to pick some momentum back up here. And and, and did you look at look, look at look at what whoa 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 I'm surprised they even let that happen to Joe. I think they're waiting, waiting like, 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 they made they were a little shot that that Mason Chronic was still fighting back. Another double team there by, by Norman TJ. Oh, and kicking, kicking TJ in the face. Joe Omega, Blaine, no, Mason Chronic out. And what, we're going, we're going to replay here and the music, the Crusaders music kit and the black and white is back. What? The Crusade has just laid out Mason Chronic, but what does that mean for our our, our Fatal Four Way match? Mason Joe Omega didn't win this match. I'll tell you that right now. There was no match. There wasn't a match for there was. These guys just the Crusade destroyed everything. My analysis table was main event. Mason Chronic's down and out. The Crusade is here in North American Elite Wrestling. Good night, everybody.